Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father, through Jesus Christ, His Son, our Savior. Amen. The text for this morning's sermon is the Old Testament lesson from 1 Samuel chapter 3. I invite you to follow along as we look at these verses. 1 Samuel chapter 3, beginning at the first verse. Boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls, you say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is God's Word. In the name of Jesus Christ, our gracious Lord and Savior, the fellow children of God. Andy, Thomas, supper. Jennifer Marie, you get over here right this instant. Bobby, Bobby, where are you? How do you respond when somebody calls your name? Well, I, I suppose it depends who it is that's calling and why. If it's your pesky little brother, you may not answer. You may be hoping he doesn't find you. On the other hand, if it's one of your friends at school, you, may, you might wave and go over and talk to him or her. If it's your mom or dad, they sound rather angry. You may not want to answer, but you probably would anyway, just so you don't get yourself in even more hot water. But what if it was God who was calling? Philip, Philip, how would you answer then? That's precisely what we see this morning in the verses of our text. We see God calling a young boy named Samuel. Samuel, Samuel. But wait, Samuel isn't the only one he's calling. He's calling you and me as well. This morning, you and I want to sit up and listen to our Lord. We want to listen carefully to his gracious invitation and respond with humble faith and obedience. Listen, the Lord is calling you. Our story takes us back several thousand years, back to the days of the judges. Remember the judges? People like Othniel and Ehud, people like Gideon and Samson. It was a dark day in the history of God's people, a time when People were very unfaithful to the Lord. Time when they repeatedly fell into the sin of worshiping other gods. Gods like Baal and Asherah and Moloch. As a result, God handed them over to their enemies. Like the Philistines and the Midianites and the Ammonites. Those enemies came and 
ravaged their crops and, and destroyed their villages and oppressed the people for 8, 10, 20 years at a time. Eventually, the people would repent and turn back to the Lord. And, and then he would send a judge, someone like Gideon or Samson, to deliver them from their enemies. So along came Gideon, drove out the Midianites. And along came Samson and delivered them from the Philistines. And the people would remain faithful to the Lord for a while. But sadly, it wasn't long before they fell back into that sin of idolatry again, worshiping other gods again. In short, they did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And sadly, it, it wasn't just you know, limited to the people. Some of the priests were guilty too. Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli the high priest, were, were wicked men. When people came to the t tabernacle to offer their sacrifices, they would take a share for themselves. In fact, they would take a choice cut, a por portion that was usually reserved for the Lord. You know what that would be like? That would be like the pastor receiving the offering plates from the ushers, taking out a wad of cash and stuffing it in his pocket, and then taking the offering plates and putting them up on the altar. If that wasn't bad enough, they also slept with some of the women who came to serve at the tabernacle. It's a dark day in the history of God's people. No wonder the word of the Lord was rare. Did you catch that phrase back in the very first verse? The word of the Lord was rare. As God so often does when people turn a deaf ear to Him. As God so often does when people turn their backs on Him and live their lives in rebellion against Him, God withdrew His word. He didn't speak to their leaders as He had in the days of Moses and, and Joshua. He didn't appear to their leaders as He had, for example, to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob as He had to Moses. There were not many visions in those days. The word of the Lord was rare. And yet, the Lord could not turn his back on his people. He is, after all, the God of free and faithful grace. Even when people are unfaithful to him, he is always faithful. He always keeps his promises. So, because of his faithfulness, because of his undeserved love, the Lord revealed himself again. But not to one of the leaders this time. Not to Eli, the high priest. No, instead, he revealed himself to a, a young boy named Samuel. Samuel was Hannah's son. The one that she had, she had prayed for in her grief and her sorrow. In his mercy, the Lord heard and answered her prayer and, and gave her the son that she asked for. And in gratitude, Hannah gave him back. When he was still very young, perhaps only two or three years old, Hannah brought her son Samuel back to the tabernacle and dedicated him to the service of the Lord. So that became his house. That's where he lived with Eli and his two wicked sons. That's where he, he served the Lord. This particular time in his life, Samuel was maybe 12, 13 years old. His service was probably rather menial, tending the, the lamps on the seven-branch candlestick, opening the, opening the doors of the tabernacle day by day, serving as Eli's personal attendant because his, his eyesight was failing. And yet, the Lord had other plans for this young boy. You see, the time of the judges was drawing to a close, and in their place, God was going to raise up prophets, people who would serve as his ambassadors and proclaim his word to his people, and Samuel was going to be the first. Samuel, Samuel. 
At first, Samuel thought Eli was calling him. Three different times he went over to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. And Eli said, No, I didn't. But then finally he figured out, It must be the Lord that's calling him. So he instructed Samuel to, to go and lie down again. And, and if that, he heard that voice calling him again, he should say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. This time the Lord came and stood right there in the tabernacle and he, he called out Samuel's name as he had before. Samuel! It's time for Samuel to begin a, a new phase in his life. To begin serving as a prophet. Does any of this sound familiar? Time of wickedness and godlessness? A time when people don't have much time for the Lord and His Word. A time when people are becoming very unfaithful to the Lord, when the worship of others' gods is on the rise. A time when greed and corruption and immorality are rampant, not only out in society, but even in the church. You know, it would serve us right. It would serve us Americans right if God made His Word rare once again. If He withdrew His Word from us and just let us go our own way, down our own path of sin and, and destruction. And yet, the Lord is the God of free and faithful grace. He hasn't turned His back on us just as He didn't turn His back on his, the Old Testament people of Israel. He continues to reveal Himself to us too, just as He did to Samuel. He reveals Himself to us in His Word. The Word became flesh, the Bible says. You and I have the ultimate revelation of God. In His grace, God sent His own Son, Jesus Christ, born as a baby in Bethlehem. The eternal Son of God became one of us so that He might reveal who God is and what He is like. So that He might declare God's love for a lost and fallen world. That, it, that He might demonstrate God's love by offering His life for us on the cross so that we might be forgiven, might be brought back into a right relationship with Him. We don't need any visions. We don't need to hear any voices in the dark. We have the ultimate revelation of God and His love. As the writer to the Hebrews says, In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son. So, do we take time to listen? Do we make time in our busy day-to-day -day lives to sit down with our Bibles and let the Lord speak to us? Do we make time in our hectic schedules to come to God's house and Listen as the Lord speaks to us in His Word. Studies tell us that the average Christian teen, the average Christian teen, spends about 20 hours a week listening to music and less than one listening to or reading God's Word. Studies tell us that only 12% of students who attend a Christian school, only 12% have personal devotions or devotions with their family at home. And in a recent study of Lutherans, 57% indicated that they read their Bible several times a year at the very most. Is the word of the Lord becoming rare among us too? Are we making it rare because 
We're too busy. We have too many other things going on. Shame on us if it is. This is where God speaks to us. This is where God reveals himself to us, even as he did to Samuel. You heard his voice in your baptism. When God called you out of the darkness of unbelief and created faith in your heart. When God called your name and brought you into his family as one of his children. You heard his voice in our gospel lesson this morning, calling you to follow him, to forsake the ways of the world and walk in his ways, to serve him with your life, perhaps even become one of his ambassadors and and serve as a pastor or teacher. Every time we open our Bibles, every time we come to God's house, we hear our gracious Lord calling us calling us to follow Him, calling us to serve Him, calling us to honor Him in our day-to-day lives. So how do you respond? How do you respond when you hear the Lord's voice? Do you notice how Samuel responded? Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. What a beautiful response. Speak, for your servant is listening. Unlike so many people today who think they know better than God, who reject what God's Word clearly says because they know so much better, Samuel is willing to listen to the Lord and and take his words to heart. It was also a, a response of humble obedience on Samuel's part. Unlike so many people in his day, unlike Eli's wicked sons, Hophni and Phinehas, Samuel didn't just disregard what God said. He listened carefully and and he obeyed. So how about you? How do you respond when the Lord speaks to you in his word? When he calls you to follow him, you just ignore it and go your own way? When he calls you to serve him, you say, Ah, oh, Lord, I, I, I'm too busy. I've got more important things to do. When he calls you to repent, to leave that sinful lifestyle, to flee from sexual immorality and to honor God with your body, you tell him to buzz off, to leave you alone, Truth is, we all have responded that way at times. We haven't always been ready to listen to God's Word. We haven't always been ready to serve Him with our lives. We haven't always been ready to obey what He tells us. We've been stubborn and rebellious, we've been sinful. Lord, forgive us. Have mercy on us and forgive these sins of ours for the sake of our Savior, Jesus. Jesus was never like that, was he? He always had time for God's Word. He was always ready to listen to God's Word, always ready to serve Him, always ready to honor Him with His life. He did that for you and me. And our place is our Savior. And for all the times that we didn't have time for God's Word, all the times we were just too busy, all the times that we blew God off and weren't willing to listen or follow Him, He gave His life on the cross. He gave His life in payment for our sins so that we might be forgiven, so that we might have peace, so that we might have life. Lord, help us to be more like Samuel. When you speak to us in your word, 
when you call us to follow you, when you call us to serve you, when you call us to to honor you in our day-to-day lives, help us out of gratitude and thanks to you to respond like Samuel, with open ears and ready and willing hearts. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Listen. Do you hear that? The Lord is calling you. In an ungodly and, and wicked world, the Lord is calling you. Calling you to follow Him. Calling you to serve Him. Calling you to honor Him in your, in your life. I pray your response will be the same as Samuel's. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Amen.